Okay, so let's chat about the homemaking journey. I have been a homemaker for about the last four years and I do not have it all together to say the least, but here are some things that I wish somebody would have said to me maybe in the beginning of my journey or even just things that I need to remind myself ongoing. So a lot of this stuff is gonna be like more mindset based or something, but it's things that I wish I heard and things that I think in the future, just going back and watching this video is gonna be that reminder that I need to be like, all right, Kay, you got this. So first and foremost, I wanna say, if you are new to the homemaking journey or if you've been a homemaker for a while, you have got this, okay? The first thing that I had to tell myself, and I tell this to all moms, but I had to tell myself, like, there is no better wife, mom, homemaker for this family than me. And when I, like, truly start to believe that, it changed the way that I showed up as a wife, as a mother, as a homemaker, because it's like, there's nobody that could do it better than me for this family that I have. When I thought about it from that context, and when I thought about, like, you know what, I'm doing the best I can to keep this home, and there's nobody that could do this better than me for this family, that just, like, really gave me that power and that strength to be like, you know what, God, you gave me this family, you gave me this husband, you gave me this home for a reason, and I'm gonna steward it well. And it just really shifted my perspective around who I am as a wife, a mom, and as a homemaker. So that's the first thing. Second thing that has been really helpful, and it kind of, I'm not gonna say it came out of nowhere, but I didn't expect this to be something that I needed to do. But I read Proverbs 31, and I still read Proverbs 31 every single day. And I don't just read it to be reading it. I read it to glean something new about who I am as a wife, as a mom, even as a business owner. Like when I read Proverbs 31 every single day, I glean something new about my identity in Christ, right? Who I am called to be. And obviously a lot of us, we, you know, we tend to want to model our lives after the Proverbs 31 woman. And it's not to say that we have to strive to this certain level of perfection or that we have to be like this type of woman or mom in order to be blessed. It's not that at all, but it is something that for me, when I read Proverbs 31, I feel convicted. Like every day I just feel convicted about something. There was a season where I was like being convicted about how I was engaging and responding to my husband, right? Like I was having a very short temper towards him, not realizing that like, oh, we're all, like we're both growing. This is both of our first time being parents and stuff. And so it's like, it's our first time being married. You know, like it's it's just, there's so many things that we're both experiencing and I wasn't giving him that grace, right? And so Proverbs 31 convicts me every single day on something new. It's never the same thing. And that's what I love that even after, right now, I think I've been going on like 90 days of reading it every single day and every day I get something new from it. So that's like a, I don't even know if that I would call that a life hack, but it's definitely been a homemade hat for me to just really shift my perspective around what I believe my role is as a wife, as a mom, as a business owner, as a homemaker. It just really has shifted my perspective around that. The third thing I did, and this is like random I feel, but I slowed down. I used to be rushing every single day to like, you know, oh, I have all these things to do on my to-do list. I need to cook. I need to, you know, do this. I need to clean. I need to do all these things. I have this long to-do list and I was just rushing to do everything. Thing. And in doing that, I was rushing my experience as a mom as well because, you know, the kids are washing their hands. And of course, it takes kids 25 minutes for some reason to wash their hands. And, you know, I'm in such a rush that I'm missing out on the moment that, like, it's not even that deep. Like, we can go ahead and play in the water. Like, you want to play in the water? Let's play in the water, right? You want to spend an hour in the tub? We can do that, right? Like, and I consider myself so blessed in the fact that like everything I do, I can do from home and like, all my work I can do from home. You know, we, we I'm home full time with the kids. So there's so many things that I'm like blessed to be able to do. And I just had to like say, you know what, Kay, like savor this moment. Like, and so now I slow down, like nothing is an emergency. And if there is an emergency, you need to call the cops, right? You need to call somebody else besides me because I'm not the person for the emergency because I have to steward this home and this family well. And it's not to say that I'm not available for my family and my friends and stuff like that, but it is to say that I am I'm choosing my peace. Like I'm choosing not to, you know, be running myself ragged all over the place for other people at the expense of my family. And also on that same note, I'm not gonna like run myself ragged and feel like, oh, I gotta, you know, adhere and, and fill this, or not fill, but I have to like finish everything on my to-do list or today was a failure. Like, no, it's not that deep. Like nothing 
is an emergency. Like I can literally take my time and that has been just so good for my spirit, but it's also been so good for my my kids and for, for my husband. Like for us to not feel rushed or like there's so much pressure to just get everything done. It's like, it's not that deep. We can slow down, we can take our time. We can really enjoy, you know, the day. We can enjoy, you know, random things like cooking together, right? Like I, I used to cook with the kids and you know, if they're going too slow, which I mean, they're toddlers, right? Of course they're gonna go slow. So if they're moving too slow, I'm like, okay, I'll do it, mama will do it. And it's like, no, I don't have to take the, the task away from them. I can just do it with them and we can just take our time. So slowing down has been a really big thing. And it does mean, yes, I get a little bit less done. Yes, I do things with them crawling all over me, but it gets done, right? And I feel happy, I feel fulfilled, I feel joy, and I don't feel overwhelmed because it's like, okay, so it took a little bit longer. It's not that big of a deal, right? So that is something else that just has really worked for me. It's just slowing down. So the fourth thing is a bit more tactical, but it was buying fun cleaning products. So I feel like I'm gonna say everything is random, even though I know it's not all random, it, it does make sense. Um, but yeah. buying cleaning products, like fun cleaning products, has made my cleaning experience a lot better because my I grew up, I grew up in like, you know, we use washcloth to wipe the walls and all that kind of stuff. And so when I became a mom, um, I just had this like aversion to clean. Like I just was like, I don't want to clean. I was so mad about cleaning. We hired a cleaner for a little bit. And so, you know, I was just like, ugh, I'm not really interested in this. So in order for me to like really enjoy cleaning, I knew that I had to kind of gamify this thing. So my my dad, which is uh, Tay's, Tay's parents, um, he bought me this like Swiffer mop and it's like a Swiffer, it's not even just a mop, like it's an actual vacuum that made sweeping easier, right? Cause I didn't want to sleep. Um, I bought like, you know, this little thing to scrub the tubs and the toilet so I didn't have to get on my hands and knees. It's been a game changer, right? But I found like fun cleaning products that make my job easier and it makes me, I'm not gonna say excited about cleaning, but I don't have any like qualms about cleaning. Um, I love using like the Clorox, like the Clorox bleach wipes and I like using like the, what do you call that? The window spray, the Windex wipes and stuff. Like things that just make it feel like cleaning is fun. <laughs> I like buying those things. And so that's been really great for my mental, but also to help me keep things clean, right? Because as a homemaker, like part of our job is to keep the home clean, but it's hard to do when you just simply don't enjoy cleaning or when all your cleaning supplies and cleaning, you know, things just feel so like, oh, this is going to be a laborious task, right? So that's the deal with my cleaning. So the fifth thing, which I feel like is going to be something that I'm going to be constantly working on and it's like an ongoing thing is having hobbies. So having hobbies has been something that, um, you know, was very easy to do before I had kids. But now that I have kids, obviously they're like on top of me all the time. And it can just be a lot to try to like, you know, pull out the things that I want. But in the last couple of years, I've been really intentional about being or spending more time on my hobbies, whether it's reading, right? Like reading is a hobby, right? And reading is something easy that you can do. You can you can read from your phone, right? So reading, um, roller skating. I'm still teaching myself how to roller skate. I'm not that great at it, but roller skating is a hobby for me. Maybe you want to paint. Maybe you want to knit, right? I love knitting. I haven't knit in a while, but um, I love knitting. Knitting is a hobby of mine. So at a certain point in my motherhood journey, I had to come to terms with the fact that I had kind of lost my identity in my motherhood. And I'm sure that a lot of us can relate to just feeling like we're 24 seven in mom mode and we like don't know who we are anymore. So I got really intentional about, okay, what are some things that I know I enjoy doing that's going to fill my cup, right? Things like reading, things like roller skating, things like just getting in my car and listening to music, like even, and, and stuff that I know I can still do with the kids, right? I can knit with the kids, I can read with the kids. Like there are things that we can still do together so I can still be present, but still also fill my cup and still do something that like is truly just for me. Prioritizing my hobbies in the last couple of years has just really been a game changer in my homemaking journey because it's allowed me to create things and do things that bring me joy, which overall brings a lot more peace to the house because I'm less stressed or I'm less overwhelmed and I'm able to really, you know, give my time to my family and to my home because my cup is also poured into. Now I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't mean that it's, you know, not challenging sometimes. It doesn't mean that sometimes I still don't get overwhelmed and tired, but I have found since I've really prioritized hobbies, things that are outside of business, motherhood, wife, you know, wife duties, home duties. When I found things that were outside of that realm, I have felt so much more fulfilled and a lot more content in my role as those other have. And so speaking of being content, my sixth thing is be content and find beauty where you are. So I'm gonna share a little story. When we first moved, my husband and his mom went and bought these sofas and they were these gray recliner sofas. And 
I did not like them. And I made my displeasure very known about these sofas. And I don't know, uh, reading Proverbs 31, I was convicted and I was like, you know what, let me ask Tay, did he pick the sofa? Cause this whole time I'm thinking that, you know, his mom picked the sofa. And I was like, man, like our styles are just so different. Like me and his mom's style are so different. Like I would have never picked this. And so, you know, I don't know what was happening, but I asked Tay, like, did you buy, like, did you pick the sofa? And he said, yes. And oh my gosh, it just like shifted me because I was like this whole time and it had been a couple of months and I had been complaining about these sofas and the whole time he liked the sofas and I just felt so like, dog, you know, I I should have watched my mouth, right? I should have watched my mouth in that, in that situation. And that is what really first started to convict me on being content and making peace with what we have, right? When we moved, you know, these the, the walls here, I was like, oh my gosh, I hate this yellow color of the walls, blah, blah, blah. It makes everything look, you know, a certain type of way that I didn't like. And, you know, I just had this whole thought in my mind, right? And then I was like, you know what? Why don't you just work with what you have, right? Like be like being grateful for what you already have. And it doesn't mean that we can't make things more beautiful or we can't, you know, um, strive for things to be better but we also don't have to like complain right we don't have to like be negative in the moment and so something that i have done lately is just i'm just content right i'm just at peace with what i have and i'm grateful for those things and it's made it to where now i'm having so much fun decorating right decorating his sofa right decorating his sofa that he likes and you know what i love that he bought a piece of furniture that he loves you know what i'm saying even though it's not my style guess what the things that I'm adding to it, the pillows, the blankets, it, those are my style. So, I mean, I, it, I love it now. Like, you know, I love it. And, and maybe because it's my man, right? Like, he picked it, so I'm gonna like it. Maybe like that's the energy that I'm having there, but also, but also I just feel truly content and at peace with what I have. Same with these walls. Like I'm not in a season where I have the energy or the time with the kids to paint the walls and do all this extra kind of stuff. No, I'm going to decorate it as it is, right? We're going to make it work and we're going to let it be beautiful and I'm going to be grateful for what's here, right? And I feel like we live in this like weird Pinterest, Instagram era where we feel like things have to be so perfect and curated in this, you know, like beige, sterile kind of situation. That's like, no, it doesn't look like that. Like, I love tacky Christmas, right? I love, you know, things not like being kind of mixed match or like a little eclectic, like, and I think, you know, I just, especially when I first entered my homemaking journey, which I feel like a lot of us experience where it's like, we see everybody with this like perfect farmhouse style aesthetic, or we see like, you know, these perfectly curated, you know, playrooms and stuff. And it's just, it's like, bro, I don't want my kids to have an all white playroom. Like that doesn't even make sense, right? Like I have toddlers, it doesn't make sense for me to like expect them to even have fun in an all white playroom. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, right? If you have an all white playroom, if that's what you actually like, go for it, right? But for those of us that like, that's not our aesthetic or like, it's like that's not what we're going for i have adopted this new mindset of i am content and i have peace where i am and i'm just going to focus on making things cozy making things homey right and i'm going to focus on if this wall art speaks to me i'm going to buy it and find somewhere to put it right if this little shelf or whatever speaks to me i'm gonna buy it and i'm gonna make that a piece of our home because guess whose home this is it's my home and i can do it how i want it doesn't have to match any kind of pinterest aesthetic or instagram aesthetic it can literally be what i feel like is going to be um a best fit for our home but also something that's going to really bring me joy and peace and make me happy and continue to allow me to stay in the state of contentment with my home so the seventh thing i did is i created my staple menu now this has been a game changer because so i used to cook then I stopped cooking and now I'm back cooking again because the kids are older and they actually want to eat food. So because they are finally back eating again, I had to like figure out what meals we were going to make. Now we are an allergy home. So everybody here has some sort of allergy, which makes things a little bit tricky. But I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down and I'm going to think of 10 meals for each, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then I have like my 10 snacks, like our 10 go-to things. And this is our staple menu. But it just makes it to where like, we don't have to think forever about food because that has been the hardest thing is like every day, like, oh, what's for dinner? What's for this? Like, uh, uh, like it's just so annoying to have to think about all that. And so when we created like our staple menu, it makes it so easy for us to grocery shop. It makes it super easy for us to meal plan. I don't have to overly think too hard and I can't add in extra things like extra meals, ex extra ideas, things I see on Pinterest or Instagram. Like if I see random stuff, I can add that stuff in. But at least I know here's our staple menu. These are things that I know the kids enjoy. My husband likes it. Like everybody here likes it. So we like have food that we can eat. And obviously like we have more options than just the 10. But if I'm just having a lazy 
busy week and I'm like, child, I don't know what we're gonna eat. I know I have these things that I can just pull from very easily. So that has been a game changer with my homemaking journey because honestly cooking and cleaning was just like, which I feel like is like the bulk of what we're doing as homemakers. It was just giving me the blues until I really figured out like a system. And I feel like 10 was the perfect amount of meals. I think I'm actually gonna find four more so I can have 14 meals that we can have two weeks of just like, this is what we're gonna eat. So the last couple of things, but I feel like it kind of builds off of this last one, but start small, okay? Start small. That is like the number one thing. I wish somebody would have told me and something that even now, like four years later, I'm still like, girl, just start small, right? Like you don't have to decorate the whole house, right? Like you don't have to, you know, meal plan for the next three months, right? Like literally starting small. So I feel like with my homemaking journey, my starting small, especially because I was postpartum and we all know that first postpartum can be like just a doozy. My first thing that I was like, okay, I'm gonna start small with this homemaking journey was just making up the bed. I was like, if I can just make up the bed, that is more than enough. Today has been a win, everything was accomplished, right? So first was like making up the bed. Then I moved on to like, okay, I'm gonna cre create a cleaning routine. Then I was like, I'm gonna start getting dressed, right? There was a period of time where like, I wasn't getting dressed. Like I might wear like sweatpants or I might just wear pajamas. Like, ooh, I would just wear pajamas. Like just switch out sweatpants, switch out the top sweatshirts like I was just like very lax in how I was dressing um but I eventually got to a point where I was like okay I'm ready to get dressed right so I would just start small and so every time I would think of an idea like right now I'm like oh I really want to decorate this home but I'm starting small I'm not even starting with a room child I'm not even starting with a room I am starting with areas of the room so like in the kitchen I started with this blank wall I decorated that okay cool now I'm gonna move on to like maybe the counters or something but like I'm decorating things piece by piece and it's not even room by room I literally decorated the piece of the kitchen and then I went and created my command center that's in a whole other room and it's just on a wall right so it's like as homemakers we don't have to do everything right like you don't to be successful at this or to really like do it well you don't have to like jump out the gate and do everything perfectly i still don't quite have a cleaning routine right like i know how to clean i know what i'm gonna clean but like i don't really have a routine for how things are going i'm currently working on a laundry routine i still don't understand yet how we're going to stop having piles and piles of laundry in like every single room of the house there's literally laundry in every room of the house and i'm still like how are we organizing this i don't know right i don't know but i'm gonna get there right and i feel like starting small is like that thing that can just help us will help me i'm not even gonna speak for everybody else but it just helps me to give myself credit where credit is due now the last thing i want to say just coming off of that is that we have to embrace the mess um i've just come to the conclusion that listen my house is not going to look spotless right now because i do have toddlers i hear dada i hear him he's here um but we have to embrace the mess right and so that is what i'm constantly encouraging i'm constantly like encouraging myself in that hey just embrace the mess right it's only for season and one day i feel like i might miss the mess like i think back to like when i was younger and i had a lot of siblings and i when i moved out i missed the mess and like the hustle and bustle of being one of many people in a family so i know that when the kids get older or when they finally leave the home you know that just makes me sad to think about but when they finally leave the home i'm going to miss this season so embracing the mess is just so crucial and key and really enjoying my homemaking journey where i am now so these were just nine things that um i wish someone would have told me and just things that i have done to help me kind of embrace the homemaking journey and to get better at this so hope you enjoyed this and i will see you next one oh oh he scared you mm. <laughs>